Hey everyone, this is Damon, back again with another video. Uh, I'm going to try to do something a little different than what I've uh, been doing in the past. Uh, normally I do uh, reaction videos, I've done a couple of unboxing videos, um, and, and as you can see, I'm in a different room um, than I usually am. I'm in the guest room of my house, uh, because the normal space that I usually use, which is my office uh, slash child's bedroom. <laughs> uh, he is currently sleeping for the night, um, so I can't really use that space. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to do uh, a video uh, right now, um, sort of a review, um, and my thoughts on the Netflix Masters of the Universe Revelation series, because everyone's talking about this. Um, and I want to give my thoughts on this. Uh, but before I get to that, let me remind you that if you are new to the channel, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and please hit the notification bells so that you can be notified of content that I upload in the future. So, Masters of the Universe Revelation. I have done a couple of reaction videos uh, for the trailers. I was very excited about this. Um, so, I, and I, I mentioned, I, I did talk about it a bit in those videos, but let me just get... Let me just give you more backstory here, um, uh, just about exactly why this defined my childhood, okay? Um, I was born in 1976. I am 45 years old. I grew up in the 80s. Um, so I, I think I was like maybe um, probably about seven or eight or so when I first discovered he-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I believe that it, it must have been the original filmation series that premiered in 1983, um, which is why I said I must have been about seven or eight. Um, I believe that that is what drew me in to this world. Uh, you know, and I was an only child for almost 11 years. Um, you know, my sister was born in December of 86. Um, so... And also, I uh, when I grew up in New York, I went to a like a very small private school, <laughs> uh, and you know I had like a few friends and stuff, but um, yeah, like I I pretty much was like the only kid in my class who actually loved Masters of the Universe. Everyone, went, all the other kids were into like GI Joe, Transformers, and everything. I liked He Man, the Masters of the Universe. I have very fond memories of coming home from school every day, and it was on basically after school, I think like 3 or 3.30, every day, Monday through Friday, when the original show was in syndication. You know, there are 130 episodes of that original show, and um, and then when She-Ra eventually premiered in like 85, I think it was like the power hour. <laughs> I just watched these things to death all the time. Um, it defined my childhood. I, 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 and amazingly enough, I'm pretty sure I have not seen every single episode. Um, I, I probably seen, probably saw most of season one, maybe some season two episodes. I've discovered like years later that are like, oh, I didn't see all of them. But I had a pretty good, like my history with this is like I knew these characters left and right. Um, I even. You know, later on, at, even as after the series ended, I would read that they had, I think there was like a very short-lived um, Marvel Comics, like a bi-monthly comic book series of Masters of the Universe, which only lasted 13 issues. I, I didn't have every issue, but I had most of them. Um, and I, I really enjoyed those comics. I dragged my parents to take me to see The Secret of the Sword. Um, I went to see the live-action Masters of the Universe movie, so I am a huge, huge fan of the franchise. Um, you know, and then I think I think it was once I was actually exposed to the animated series was when I got into the vintage toys because I didn't I didn't get them all right away. I, I I think the line the original toy line had only been out like maybe two years or something, and my parents taking me to Toys R Us to get like every toy that came out at, at that point um, up until then. And it was like Christmas morning for me. It was like a Saturday morning. We went to Toys R Us when that was still a thing. I, I think I mentioned all of this in, in one of the other videos. Um, so, you know, I loved this franchise so much. It was just such an important 
part of my childhood, so much so that I want to share this with my son, Ciro. I hope that when he gets old enough in a few years, he will enjoy what I did. I've gone to great lengths to try to, it was like perfect timing, this, this new Masters of, the Ar Masters of the Universe Origins toy line, which is just, which started um, like last year. I got him He-Man, you know, I got He-Man, I got Skeletor, you know, obviously the two big heavy hitters, and I've got so many others too. I mean, they're just still coming out with these things. I mean, I even have, you know, the little Eternia minis, Battle Armor He-Man, Battle Armor Skeletor. I got these things. I've got... You know, I, I've got, this was like from the 2000X relaunch, and I never even opened these, and I may open them at some point. I you know, I, I don't know. I, I still have no idea what I'm going to do with these. Um, but, you know, and, uh, and I mentioned the 2000X series, which I watched when that was on Cartoon Network, and I actually really enjoyed that series. It was It was what I wished the original Filmation series had been. So... Masters of Universal Revelation has been uh, promoted as, I don't know if it's like the exact continuation of the Filmation series, but it's like a spiritual sequel. It was supposed to pick up right where the original series left off, which, you know, there wasn't really much of a story to the original series. It didn't have any you know, it didn't really flow from one episode to the next. Every episode was its own self-contained thing. I mean, you can pretty much watch them out of sequence and not be lost. You know, it wasn't that kind of show. It was just every... It, it had a very simple formula, you know. It was He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. It was more than just He-Man. It was, it was his allies, the heroic warriors fighting Skeletor and the evil warriors. And, you know, always trying to foil one of Skeletor's plans. And if you notice... It, 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 like, He-Man never used his sword, like, never really, other than transforming and saying, by the power of Grayskull, you know, I have the power, you know, like, that whole thing. Um, you know, like, he always basically, like, violence was, was almost, like, the last, was the last step that he would take when just words didn't work. He would basically punch his way to victory you know and you knew that that was what was going to happen there was always a moral at the end of every episode because you know you had to teach kids like oh you know there's all these memes going around too you know until next time everyone um you know it, but it was just it was just fun it was good old-fashioned fun you know and um uh but, uh, but i wanted to talk about the masters of the universe revelations it would be it's been about, um, I think, three days or so since this is um, premiered on Netflix. I finally got around to watching it yesterday morning uh, with my wife uh, because she's kind of a fan. I don't think she's as huge of a fan as I was. Her thing is Ninja Turtles, which I like the Ninja Turtles too. But where I'm Masters of the Universe, she's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. She loved that. So we both kind of have our thing. But she loved He-Man too. Um, you know, she's a little younger than me. So Ninja Turtles was more, you know, for her, you know, because that came along a bit later. Anyway, um, what I was saying was that, uh, you know, th this was this was my thing, and uh, I, I kind of lost track of what I was what I was saying. Um, yeah. No. Anyway, let's. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about uh, sort of. This is going to be a spoiler review. Um, Basically, the first episode, which this was this was said by Kevin Smith, the producer, showrunner of the, of the series, was that it was going to pretty much start out like the original series did, and then suddenly things were going to end up being different. Something was going to happen. Big spoiler alert! The big thing that happens is that He Man dies at the end of the at the end of episode one. Uh, this is this is the thing that's basically tearing up half of the the Motu community as oh my god you killed He-Man he's the main character how can you kill him off I'll get back to that in a minute uh, but there there's a reason why it happens it's basically he sacrifices himself and um, 
like I think like Moss Man actually like he like blink and miss he shows up like really quickly and like he dies and it gets He Man angry enough that he kind of uses a sword like Skeletor kind of tricks him, um, and uh, it, it, it's basically this is this is like the natural progression of what will happen if you know like this is basically what would happen if Skeletor finally had a plan that he like came up with that it has to do with magic being destroyed in Eternia and and there's this whole storyline that goes on where because magic has been destroyed and He-Man basically has to tear the sword apart while he's He-Man and call upon the power of Grayskull which basically turns him back into Adam and he can't contain the power and he dies so and and Tila basically everyone finds out and Tila's really angry about this because she never knew and and yeah, the story pretty much follows her journey. But it's not just about her, it's about other characters. Uh, Tila's like pretty much leading the charge, but you also have Evil Lynn. She has its major story arc going on, which is very interesting. And she kind of realizes that she doesn't need to be evil. And, you know, she, she just always wanted to rule. But she has to team up with them because she realizes that, like, because she uses magic, like, I think it's slowly killing her. Um, Orko's dying because he uses magic as well um you know and, and there's like a few characters that have some significant story arcs which they never really did in the original series but they they hinted at things um and and they they're kind of dancing around the fact that tila does have this legacy that she um is meant to embrace um but she just isn't quite aware of everything because people have been lying to her her whole life um and i'll get back to how I feel about all of that and how they react to that in a minute. Because I'm going to say what I liked and what I didn't like. Um, it, it's just the story itself, um, I, I think, is just a really great story. Um, it, it, it's just, it's it's showing what a world is like without He-Man and why he's so important. You know, what happens when he's not there to protect Eternia or he's unable to. You know, and I went into this kind of thinking that, well, something's going to happen to him and he's either going to not be able to become He-Man, maybe he's going to die. Um, you know, I was kind of hoping he wouldn't die, but it kind of also doesn't surprise me either. Um, you know, and, and we actually see him, like, the shadow of He-Man is always there. Like, it, it, it permeates all, all of part one, the first five episodes, because Skeletor also pretty much dies along with He-Man in that first episode. So this whole journey about trying to reforge the two halves of the sword, and one basically one half goes to heaven and one half goes to hell. It's hell is subternia, and heaven is preternia, which I always thought preternia should have been like the ancient past of eternia, and it, it, it seems like it's sort of like the bridge that where all of the past of eternia kind of is there. This is like a nexus where. The, the spirits of all of the previous champions throughout Eternia's history are all there, when, of course, Prince Adam is there, um, along with King Grayskull, along with Hero, um, along with Wondar, which is, like, <laughs> you know anything about Wondar, that was, like, a like a, a, a nod to uh, the infamous Wonderbred He-Man. It was, like, this, this, this no one knows. It was, like, this urban legend about where did this... Um, this he-man action figure come from that was like supposedly a wonder bread promotion and they they turned him into a character called wonder it's it's just, it, 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 that was what i loved about this series was all of the nods to all of the various um kind the canons that we've seen um which uh, you know I, I i've mentioned this before but i i had picked this up um, probably a few months back. Um, this is the, you know, character guide and world compendium. This kind of delves into all of the various, like the different things from the mini comics, uh, from the Filmation series, from the 2000X series. Like this gets into all of that stuff. And th there are a lot of different, um, like a lot of different takes on the mythos and the lore um, in different like newspaper strips and everything, this kind of delves into all of that, and I I I have barely scratched the surface of this book because this is a big book to get through. It's very text heavy, 
Um, but I've, I've learned a lot about this over the past year, like a lot more than I ever knew about it. Um, you know, I, I mean, and I even had, you know, th this I got even more recently. Um, and I'm almost through this book because this is more pictures and everything. Uh, this gets into all the toys, too. Um, you know, and it's just I've been really enjoying getting back into the lore of all of this. Um, because, because there are nods to all these different aspects, like the two, like the two halves of the swords, that's from the vintage toy line. He-Man had one half, Skeletor had the other. When you put them together, they form the key to Skull. That wasn't in the original Filmation series, and now they kind of incorporated that into the story. The whole idea of reforging the sword is kind of a 2000, is kind of a lost 2000X storyline that that was, that was the original idea behind it was that. Skeletor gained both halves of the sword, of, of the power sword, and then they were renegades, um, and that Man-at-Arms had to forge a mechanical sword for He-Man, which is why it looks so different. Um, but they ended up dropping that storyline and basically just rebooted it and said, well, it was a, you know, just that's the way the sword looks. Um, but I, 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 I can definitely tell that there are shades of that in the story. Like, there's all these different story beats that are like, they're kind of pulling from all different eras of Masters of the Universe and, and, and giving us a more adult-oriented story, um, like just the kind of story that I would have loved to have seen as a kid, but we weren't allowed to get stories like that when we were kids. It was a very strict formula. You knew who the good guys were, you knew who the bad guys were, and the good guys always won. That's the way every episode was, and no one could ever be placed in any sort of mortal danger, hero or villain. No one could be placed in any type of mortal danger. So there were really no stakes, no consequences at all. After a while, that gets a bit boring. Even if, even for me as a child and my really creative brain, uh, you know, being alone and being the only one around to play with my toys and come up with all these weird scenarios, I came up with scenarios where Skeletor would maybe win and you know, He-Man would be helpless or near death or something like that. Um, and that's exactly what happens is even though he, Adam kind of comes back from heaven and says, okay, well, let's, let's try to bring magic back and all this, he's about to say, by the power of Grayskull, and he's about to take back that power because he's come back to the land of the living, and right before he says it, you see that Skeletor comes out, this is episode five, where he basically stabs him through the back, and he says, by the power of Grayskull, I have the power, and he transforms into Skelegod, which is, I think I mentioned this too, I called that, I called it, I, I knew exactly what was going to happen. Sure, the toy spoiled it a little bit, because this toy, he has the power sword, but we were wondering exactly who Skelegod was, and that's, I, I knew that that's what the, I knew that that was what was going to happen. Um, it's exactly something that I would have come up with. And this is what's the cliffhanger that's going to take us into part two. Now, I don't believe that Adam is actually dead dead. I think he's been seriously mortally wounded. I think this is what we're going to find out in part two is that he's going to have to, he's going to have to heal. He's, and there's going to end up being this big epic battle. And somehow he's going to have to get that power back. And there's going to be this big epic battle between He-Man and the Skele God. And by the end of this They'll be victorious, you know, you know, so, you know, I, I feel confident that it's going to turn out um, better than what some people are thinking right now, um, because we've only seen half of the story. This is only part one. Part two, I don't know when we're going to get part two, um, but, you know, five episodes of part one, five episodes of part two. But so, so, you know, so. I mentioned a lot of things that I did like. Some of the things that I did not like. Uh, the voice act, the, the voice cast. Um, uh, not, not, not to say anything negative about the voice acting because Mark Hamill is Skeletor. I love Mark Hamill. He's fantastic. Um, and there's a lot of really great actors in this. You know, voice acting. You know, you have Sarah Michelle Gellar as Tila. Um, it kind of worked for me. I, I, like, I didn't mind her, her voice. You know, and they don't sound a lot like the Filmation characters. Okay, this is, this is kind of a different 
spin on the original series, but I I feel like a lot of these people were miscast. Uh, Mark Hamill sounds way too much like like the Joker. Uh, it doesn't really sound different enough as Skeletor, you know. So I it, it wasn't quite working for me. Not not that he was terrible, but. You know, I, I heard him talk, and I'm hearing the Joker more than I'm hearing Skeletor. And the same thing went for Merman, because Merman was played by uh, Kevin Conroy, who is, like, the definitive voice of Batman. Um, and I think he was only in, like, one episode of Merman. He didn't have a big role, but, again, he sounded too much like Batman. Um, I wasn't too crazy about the, the, um, the voice actor for Cringer. I think his name is Stephen Root. He's he was in Office Space. Uh, you know, he's, he's done a lot of things. Um, uh, he he just he didn't sound like Cringer to me. I mean, I I I've done a voice of Cringer in a He-Man parody from a number of years back, like more than ten years ago. Um, and of course, it was supposed to be parody of the original series. Um, but um, I, I I just wasn't so crazy about the that acting. Sure, about the who, who was cast in some of these roles. Um, and another big thing that I really didn't like uh, was kind of how, not that He-Man died, but I did not like the extreme reaction that like King Randor had, um, and Tila. Um, I could understand them being upset that this huge secret was kept from them. Uh, but the, but the extreme, um, the, the, it was just, it was just taken to such an extreme. You know, we found out that Queen Marlena, Queen Marlena, uh, you know, Adam's, you know, th these were basically Prince Adam's parents, um, that she sort of knew, that she always knew, they, they always alluded that she kind of knew, but they never confirmed that. Um, and, uh, King Randor was really, like, basically, he, Cold man at arms, he exiled him, stripped him of his rank, and he basically told him, like, if you ever come back to this kingdom, you're going to be executed. Like, whoa! Like, like I understand you. Like, it's understandable him being upset that his son died, um, but that was really an extreme, like, very, very extreme reaction. And then Tila, in that first episode, kind of comes off as uh, an entitled brat. <laughs> Uh, I, I, you know, afterwards it, it gets a lot better, but the, her initial reaction just didn't ring true to me. Um, it is something that I felt like she basically is like, oh, I'm abandoning, I'm abandoning everybody. Like I'm turning my back on my kingdom, everybody. Like, um, like King Randor didn't do anything to her either. Like it, it, it just felt like, like you can understand everybody being upset, but did, are they not putting two and two together and realizing, like, but you know, okay, they kept the secret from us, and we can be angry about this, but how many times did he save us as He Man? He, like, Adam was a hero. We can be upset that he kept the secret from us, but we can also, like, be proud of him that, wow, like, okay. Like, I, I mean, it's a natural reaction to be angry when, when you when you found out you've been lied to. But also think about why that secret was kept from you. Um, that's kind of what I didn't like either. That that at, at the end I was like, this this is a bit much. Um, I mean, but the rest of the story I I, I enjoyed a lot. Like I, I like or I mean, my God, I shed a tear um, with Orko in episode four. Orko dies too because he he finally gains this 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 like he he. He's supposed to be this really powerful sorcerer uh, on his home planet of Trala, and the whole joke is that he came to Eternia and his power, his magic is just more like parlor tricks. But he, 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 be, he became a hero, like, and to, to help, like, just, just to get them out of Subternia and um, to keep them away from Scareglow. And he, he, like, he had a moment there. Where I was like, man, like. Orko really was like it, 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 I shed a tear a little bit. I, I have to I have to admit, um, because as I said, these characters meant a lot to me as a kid. Um, you know, and 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 therein is where we come to this part of the discussion, um, where I'm, I'm going to try to get into this in the next few minutes because I kind of want to 
cut this video a little shorter. This is this is, you know, I, I tried to do this last night and I, I went on for like forty three minutes. So, uh, but I, I'm trying to just get to the point here. It's it's a little frustrating to me seeing how divisive this series is. Uh, you know, I, I'm a huge fan. I would, and of course, you're not going to please everyone, but. I feel like um, where a lot of these fans are coming from, they're they're just. I think they went into this with a with a mistaken preconceived notion um, that this series was. I think they went into this thinking that it was something that it was not. Uh, you know, because the big thing they were all like, "Oh, well, you know, so this, I can do a He-Man show without He-Man." Uh, and, and oh, and now we're getting woke because Tila is like this big hero, and, and she's basically taken over for He-Man. Guess what? Tila was always an important character. Let me just, you know, let me explain something to you here. This is the best of He-Man: The Masters of the Universe. This DVD set came out. Um, I don't know when. This was a long time ago. This is out of print. They they don't even make make these anymore. I, I never got to finish all of these. I, I started getting the series. This is the top 10 episodes of the original series of all time, as voted by fans like me, of the original series. And let's, what do we think were the top 10 best episodes from both seasons of the show? Two of the episodes are Tila's Quest and Tila's Triumph. Two episodes about Tila. Tila's Triumph is, is, I think, the episode where she has to take over for the sorceress, and she doesn't understand why she needs to take over. She's supposed to become the sorceress. She's an integral character. Like, I would say second to He-Man. Kind of like Superman. Like, kind of like how Lois is to Superman. She's very important. Uh, it's, it's natural that with He-Man gone, someone's going to step forward and lead. It, uh, why wouldn't it be her? Um, and again, it is not just centered completely around her. It's, it's her journey. And it's kind of like her hero's journey because she doesn't want to accept a lot of this. But, um, you know, this, as I said at the beginning of this video, He-Man is in the shadow of this entire storyline. What, what makes, sometimes what makes great stories are when the main characters are gone for, for a certain period of time. Um, and it's just, it's just something that, I wish people would stop and think about this a little bit. Um, you know, they did this with Superman back in the 90s when Superman died. When Superman died, th that wasn't the story. The real story is what happened after that and showing a world without Superman and what happens afterwards and how everybody copes with his death and moves on. I feel like that's what they're doing with this. That That's what this series is about. And again, I've mentioned this in the prior videos. The title of the series was Masters of the Universe Revelation. This was revealed two years ago. I found it very interesting when the series was announced. Ah, He-Man's not in the title. That's pretty important. I, I understood the significance of that. I said, oh, okay. That immediately told me that this is going to be not just He-Man. This is about everyone else. He-Man is part of the Masters of the Universe. The original show, yes, was called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. The, and you had the new adventures of He-Man. The remake, the 2000X series, was He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. The new CGI series from Netflix coming late, later this year or whenever is called He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. This is called Masters of the Universe Revelation. So right there and then, it's like, well, you have a He-Man show without He-Man. Uh, it's not a He-Man show. It's a Masters of the Universe show. He-Man is just one part of the Masters of the Universe. Uh, I mean, I know it's like semantics, but it, it, it just... It, it, I mean, like, it means something to me, too. But I think uh, a storyline about what happens when He-Man's not around is, is, is so much more compelling than just seeing him punch his way to victory every single episode and and you know like everything's all like sunshine and rainbows you know that's not what i wanted to see i pretty much expected 
this. Like, this is what I went into this hoping we would get. Um, and I and I feel like a lot of people who really know the lore and understood what Masters of the Universe was about, it was not just He-Man, it was about this literally dozens of colorful, interesting characters. I could show you all the action figures, but that's not what, the, I, I don't want to even get through that. It's just all of these really great characters that just you know that that's that's what it's all about it's about that world it's it's about this you know this 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 wonderful mix of like like old like barbarian like you know, like warriors like medieval you know warriors and like technology and science and kind of all combined together and it was it that's what the appeal of the franchise is and it's just really frustrating to see that there are some people that are just so upset that he-man's not in this and it's, you're forgetting what what it, it, and you've only seen part one we haven't seen part two yet so it, it's just something that i kind of wanted to talk about i wanted to share my thoughts on this um you know, I, I can go on and on, but this is already a half hour video. This is the longest video I've ever done. Uh, but I, I felt like I really needed to talk about this and it, express my genuine, honest thoughts of this because I really did enjoy uh, this master. I really enjoyed Revelation. Um, and, and it's a shame that I, I have to feel almost bad that I liked it because of some toxic fans and i'm realizing that wow i thought the star wars community was bad whoa <laughs> there are some people on these I, I, i'm a member of some facebook groups uh people have a lot to say about this um i'm seeing youtube videos where i people just judged this before it even premiered uh I don't know what else to say about it. Um, th that's my thoughts on on Masters of the Universe Revelation. Uh, what did you think of the series? Or if you've watched it, what did you think? Did you enjoy it? Do you agree with me? Uh, do you feel like Kevin Smith ruined your childhood? Are you angry? Are you? What do you feel about this? I'm very curious to see what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> so until next time, this is Damon wishing you all a wonderful day.